In this video, I'm gonna show you how to photograph this bag for your e-commerce store or just even for your own fun. So I'm gonna show you how to photograph it on a white background and I'm also gonna show you how to style the bag. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Adrian and I am a professional product photographer. I've been shooting since 2007, so quite some time now. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to photograph this bag. I'm gonna go through some of the tips and tricks that I use to style the bag and also I'll go through the lighting and the type of lens that I'm going to use to uh, get the uh, best possible uh, e-commerce shot or product shot for, uh, for this product here. Let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is, as you can see, it's pretty jiggly, the bag. So what we're going to do is we're going to stuff the bag. And when you're doing fabrics like uh, or bags, that's pretty important that you actually stuff the bag. You want to fill it with a material so it um, brings out the holds its best shape. Because often you'll find these bags don't hold uh, the best shape as they are. So by filling it, you can make the get the get the shape nice, and you can also take out the wrinkles and the and the creases in the bag. When you do this, there's several different materials you can use. So the first one is you've got um, some soft sort of tissue wrapping paper. So this paper here, it's very soft, doesn't leave hard edges. If you use something like a magazine paper, for example, or newspaper, you find that the edges are a lot harder and that they could actually show through on your fabric. So often this sort of paper is better. So what you wanna do is you wanna, you just wanna roll it up into a nice shape. It's similar to your bag and you wanna get it in there. You want to make sure that the corners aren't pushed in, so you get it right in there and push the corners out. Push the bottom out too. You can also use this stuff here too. Now this is the filling that you'll find in uh, cushions or pillows, so you can actually use that. It's a little bit messier to use because it brings off a little, you know, comes apart like this and often leaves um, stuff behind, but it can also make a nice shape. Um, it's very easy to work with because you can easily tear it apart, shape it the way you want, and you can put it into your product. Uh, one tip I've found when using this is you can put it in a, like a pillowcase or a, a, a small fabric bag, and that'll just hold it all in there. Uh, in this case, we might use a bit of this, but we'll mostly be using, using the uh, rolled up paper. I'm just going to go ahead and stuff the bag. And when you're doing this too, you'll often find that you'll need quite a lot of it in there. And you want to, you don't want the bag to be bulging right out like that. So it's a case of just using the right amount of material and you might need to push it down and just work it into shape a little bit. But it's really, there's no real uh, one way to do this. It's just um, a case of really just adding some, see, and seeing how it looks. So get that in there. So right at the moment, I can see that that's a little bit too much because that's all puffed out there. So we could try and just squash it down a bit. It's a real fine line because if you don't have enough, the shape of the bag isn't actually great. So that's looking pretty good. Just push it down a little bit more. Okay, the other kind of material you can use, especially for front pockets like this, if you want to take out some of the wrinkles and make it look quite nice and flat, you can make something like this. Now this is just a piece of cardboard and it's just, I've just wrapped it in some bubble wraps. There's some old packaging I had laying around. So that'll make it a little bit softer, but it'll also be a nice, firm, straight edge, which should hold this nicely. So that just goes in there, and then we'll just do it up. There you go, just push it in a little bit more. Okay, that's looking, looking pretty good so far. Okay, next thing is the strap. What do you do with the strap? Well, there's quite a few different ways you can style the bag strap. You can run it across the front of the bag like this and, and tuck the excess sort of behind the bag. You could hang it up. Hanging it up is a good option. If you've got a strap like this, you may want to show your bag 
with at least one photo of it hanging up. That way your clients or your customers can see that it is a shoulder length bag. Um, if you don't show that, they may not know. So you can do that. Or you can actually, you could even, some people like to lay the, lay the, uh, lay the strap in front of the bag. Something like that and tuck the bulk of it around there. Just something that's neat and really neat and tidy. It's really what you do with it is it's partly your personal taste and it's also going to come down to the type of strap it is. Um, perhaps you've got a really nice strap and you want a little bit of emphasis on the strap or if it's not a particularly nice strap you might want to hide it and just tuck it behind the bag completely like that. You could just leave a little bit out like that and that way you can show that it does have a strap. If you tuck it away it'll come up with a nice neat photo. But in this case I'm going to Put it around the front. So the way I'm doing that is you find that these sort of ones they don't always sit like this perfectly or line up so in there I've got some double-sided tape this stuff here. So I've just cut off a couple of pieces I've stuck it to the inside of this and now I can just line it up nicely and now that's going to stay together. Next thing we want to do is in this case, I'm going to actually stick this strap to the front of the bag like that. And again, I've got some double-sided tape on here. I'm going to stick another piece on here. Sometimes you need to do this, sometimes you don't. Um, sometimes it'll just stay there. But with these sort of uh, fabric straps like this that aren't very, that don't have much stiffness to them, they tend to move. So we're going to put some double-sided tape here just to make your life a bit easier. So we'll stick it to the front of the bag like that, make sure it's nice and straight, that looks pretty good. And then we're going to bring it around the back of the bag like this. And what you're going to end up with, something like this. But the problem is at the moment, you've got that all hanging there. So solve that, I'm going to bring it around here. And I've just got some painter's tape here, so masking tape going to stick, stick that down there like that and that'll keep that strap out of the way we'll just pull this other we might let this this one just dangle a little or we could pull it tight so in this case I might just pull it tight and just pretty tight and get it mostly out of the way so we'll do that side put that down there and then I'm going to tuck this out of the way Right, the next thing you want to do is you want to go through you want to make sure that there's no dust and things on there and one little tip for getting getting dust and things like that and hairs off your fabric is to use the painter's tape again so you take a strip off and you just stick it on and you pull it off you can also you can also use packing tape to do this too packing tape's a bit wider often so you can get a bigger area one go and this just takes all the hairs and all the little fibres that aren't meant to be there off. It's easier, you could photoshop some of that stuff off but it's much easier to do it now. Especially if, it's, if you're going to do some close-ups because you'll find that this has got a pattern to it so when you do photoshop it you've got to maintain that same pattern otherwise you'll be able to notice that it's been photoshopped. So with the lighting set up all I've got here is some seamless background paper. I've cut the roll down to size. It comes in about, I think it's a 2.7 metre roll. And I don't know how, I can't remember how much that is in feet. Um, might be eight or nine, I think maybe nine feet or something like that, um, or eight feet. I've cut it down to the size of this table, which is about two feet, just over two feet, uh, or 60 centimetres. Got some of these clips here. So we just clipped it down. Holding it, I've got a C-stand. C-stands are awesome for this sort of thing. They make setting up this really easy. If you don't have that, you could get an old um, broomstick and some rope and you could hang it from the ceiling or you could get someone to hold it. You can also get two light stands and a pole going across to, uh, to hold it up there too. And I uh, will put a this, uh, link in the description box to uh, some of that stuff, some of those products. Uh, for the actual lighting, I've got uh, studio strobes here or flashes uh, with some uh, 
medium to large soft boxes and these are about two and a half feet or uh, 90 centimetres by, they might be a bit bigger than that actually, uh, 100 centimetres they are, just, just over three feet by about two and a half feet wide or two feet wide or 60 centimetres. What you want with this sort of product is you do want a big light, big soft box like this. It's going to give you a nice soft light generally or for an e-commerce shot like this. Um, smaller the light too, you'll, it'll show up more of the wrinkles in the fabric and in this case I don't want to show the wrinkles. You could also use a very small light source if you really want to show off the texture of the product but in this case I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use these. If you don't have studio flashes, you can. There's some nice continuous uh, lighting uh, softbox or studio lighting kits that are pretty cheap to buy. You can get them on Amazon. Again, I'll put a link in the description below. You could also use window light to do this sort of thing too. So window light, as long as it's not direct sunlight, can be pretty pretty soft, uh, nice light. Okay, camera. I've got a 100 mm macro lens. I use the macro lens because this is a really sharp lens. This is a Canon 100 uh, mm 2.8 L series lens, and this lens is really, really sharp. So it's really good for this sort of work. It's also good for portraits as well. Just because it's macro doesn't mean you need to be up super close to your subject. Um, you can use it further away and you know, get some really good results with it too. So. I've got the stabilizer on, which means less camera shake. Okay, for the camera speed, I've got this on 1 1 25th of a second, and that is the sync speed, a little bit less than the maximum sync speed of these uh, flash triggers. And I have my aperture set on F9 and the ISO at 100 because I've got it on F9. I don't need a lot of depth of field because I'm going to shoot this quite low. So we're not showing the width or the depth of the product here. This is most of the detail is on the front here and I, I will be back two, three meters, which is maybe nine, seven, nine, ten feet. So that's going to be plenty of depth of field for a product like this and it's going to keep the lens in its sweet spot for the sharpness. So I'll, t I'll take a couple of photos and then we'll uh, have a look at the results. So when you're uh, taking your photos, make sure you always review your Go back through and review your photos and what you're looking for is you're looking to make sure that the bag is nice and straight and you're going to be doing that before you take your photo as well. You want to make sure that all the little details are taken care of so that these are tucked in nicely. There's no loose threads around the bag for example, no dust or hairs on it. You want to make sure the shape is nice. I've got the lighting set up. It's a very basic setup for this sort of thing. Um, you could make it a bit more elaborate and you could put a, a light from behind as well but in this case the light's reflecting off the paper anyway giving it a little uh, glow over the top um, so this is just a very generic setup i've got the lights maybe about three feet or about a meter away from the product you could have them even closer but i've left them a bit further apart further away in this case just um, so I've got a little bit of room to work when I'm doing this video. So we'll just do another, another photo. I'm pretty happy with that. One thing you want to do when you're taking photos like this, if you can use the same setup to get a different shot, take the opportunity because it doesn't take much extra to get that extra shot and it'll save you a lot of time. We might do a close up of um, some of the, uh, the details. In this case we'll do the, we might do do a shot down there and we might do some of the stitching so all these little things they're nice uh, nice little details we might also do we'll also do a shot with the strap hanging so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just undo the strap same thing again I'll take the double sided tape off and we're just going to hang it here I've got a C stand set up and I'm just going to put that just on the edge of the stand you could easily use fishing wire, have your friend hold it up with fishing wire. That's probably the best solution because it's going to involve the least photoshopping. But in this case, often I would do it like this if I'm just by myself. I would just perch it on the very edge of the C stand and it's very minimal photoshopping. And besides, I outsource all my uh, photoshopping work anyway. Um, so it's much quicker for me just to do that and get them, get my guys to fix it up in Photoshop rather than uh, muck around with fishing line in this case. We're going to do it on a bit of an angle like this actually. 
that'll be nice and that'll also hide the tip of the c-stand this is a good shot to demonstrate that i've got because i've got that tape in there that would be open otherwise and it probably wouldn't look very good so having that tape there really keeps it nice and neat so we'll just do a shot like that stop it moving you don't want your products swinging around when you're photographing them particularly so i have to come because i've got the 100 mil lens i've got to come back quite a long way um, it's only a small space here Right, okay, that's all done. I'd take my photos into Lightroom, I'd give them some uh, rough adjustments. Uh, normally my guys would um, do the uh, photoshopping. The, um, if you're doing it yourself, you can cut around the product and that'll give you that nice white background. So cut the product off the, off the background. You can use the pen tool in Photoshop to do that. Um, you'll probably notice that there are some, probably can't see this in the camera, but there are some little kind of dents that I couldn't get out. You can uh, use Photoshop to uh, take them out just to give you a really nice uh, finish to the bag. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you learned something. Uh, next time you're shooting a bag like this, you've got some ideas on uh, how to do it. So if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment below. And thanks very much.